We magnify your name. Magnify your name. We glorify your name. as far as where I was in, my, in the spirit. But I remember I was singing one day and it was me and my cousin Don. We were singing at this uh, small church, the first church of God, in fact, in Toledo, Ohio. And uh, we were singing and both of us had our eyes closed and I heard this rumbling and I heard this scream and I opened my eyes and I saw 380 pounds of flesh coming toward me. <laughs> I was nimble enough to get out of the way. I literally ran out of the church, jumped in the car, and locked the door. 
But I've never seemed to break that habit at certain points to closing my eyes because I just want to close everything out while I'm praising God. Because I want to be that close to him. Now that may be all mental and psychological and you can say that if you want to. But there, that's a moment for me. And when we're praising God, everything should be out of the way. I don't care what problems you have. I don't care what situations you find yourself in. If you can get into that sweet spot in God, you will find that that thing is really not as bad as you think it is. You'll find that the solution is already done. That God, while you were st still praying, he already did the work. He's waiting on you to move to the next level. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. If we began to set our lives so that the only thing that we really, really praise with all of our being is God, then, then the other praises will be in proper order. Yes. Amen. Right. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We're getting ready to have our plenary speaker. We have a, a little time crunch. Uh, because they're going to convert this from sanctuary to banquet, which means we have to be out of here at 1 o'clock. All right? So we're going to give our undivided attention to our speaker today. It is both my honor and my pleasure to introduce him to, to you. He's uh, one of our newest appointees. He's the uh, new chairman of the Elders Council. Amen. Or nation, I'm sorry. All right, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to demote Superintendent Bannerman of the ordination board, uh, which is a very high honor. Yes, it is. Very high Thank honor. You. And one in which there are not many his age that hold that position. But age was not the factor. He has been an active and, and highly participative and creative member of the Elders Council and the leadership of the ordination board, the leadership of the ordination board concurred with my selection and my choice. So we're grateful to God for him. I'm going to read a bit of his um, bio. Pastor Terrence Michael Curtin Jr. is the eldest of four sons born to Terrence Sr. and Linda Curtin on December 31st. He just barely made it. 1978 in Cleveland, Ohio. At a young age, Pastor T.C. actively participated in many church activities and even delivered speeches at different churches around the state. At the young age of 10, Pastor T.C. accepted Jesus Christ as his personal savior while attending vacation Bible school with his great-grandmother, Marion Wu. Pastor T.C. continued to demonstrate his love for the Lord by playing the drums in church while attending Shaker Heights High School, he founded the Inspirational Teen Fellowship Night, a teen youth group that met every Friday. Pastor T.C. graduated from Shaker Heights High School in 1997. He attended the University of Toledo and earned a Bachelor's of Education degree in 2001. He attended Ashland University and, ordered, and earned a Master's of Education degree in 2012. He plans to continue to pursue a Master of Divinity degree, which is about one half complete at the Ashland Theological Seminary. And if there's anything that our young men have to recognize, and women, that as, you're going, as you grow and as you go forward in ministry, you're going to have to add some education to that. Amen? Yes, Amen? Yes. Because we're not ministering to a one-dimensional people. We, we, and our hope is to win the whole world. Amen? Yes, Amen. Just a little aside. In 2000, Pastor T.C. accepted his call to the ministry under the guidance of Elder Edward T. Cook. God bless. The pastor of New Life Church of God in Christ in Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> After graduation, he returned to Cleveland to continue in his training in ministry under his father, Elder Terrence M. Curtin, Sr pastor of the Tree of Life Church of God in Christ in 2002, and the rest is history. Amen. 
He has served this church and this jurisdiction in, in multiple capacities. He's a fine young man. He's the father. I, let me read the father part because I can't keep up with how many children he's had. Five, five, five. He's got five children. Five, five children. Amen. Five. Amen. He's working in the Clemens tradition. <laughs> he is the grandson of the Superintendent Burton D. Clemens, and we are so glad that he is here to see his grandson preach this preliminary message. Amen. I have a special love for the, and this is not part of this introduction, but I have a special love for the Clemens family because they represent in so many ways just one of the finest families that I know. I get upset. Amen. I get upset when they don't invite me to their family affairs. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But without any further ado, let us all stand for just a moment and give a good God bless you to our plenary speaker, the Pastor Terrence M. Curtin, Jr. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, we can do better than that. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, if he woke you up this morning and gave you life in your body, you owe him a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. While you're standing, I would, if you will, get John chapter 13, verse 21 through 38. Amen. Thank God for being here today. Uh, just God is just awesome. Amen. Uh, to my wife and children. Who are, uh, who are not here. My wife uh, recently got appointed as a principal of an elementary school in East Cleveland, and of course, uh, she was not able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, release her schedule, amen. But I thank God for the blessing. I'm not mad at that, amen, uh, amen, amen. Uh, all my children are in school right now, amen. I want them to get the best education that's possible. Amen. To the bishop of this great jurisdiction, Bishop Cook, uh, to uh, Mother Butts, we thank you. To my family, my family that's present, amen. Come on, if, you, if you're related to me in any type of way, raise your hand. Pastor Jordan, what's up, man? Where's your hand? Thank you, thank you, amen, amen. Thank God for all of uh, my family here to support me. My mother, my father's here. My grandmother, my grandmother, uh, grandfather's here. Uh, my aunties are here. I, uh, my brother and my nephew and my sister is here. We just thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Uh, to all the constituents, officers, clergy, brothers and sisters, and friends and family, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Uh, I, want, I want to say that it's happening. Can you, can you say it's happening? You know, it's happening for me. I realize that this time, that now is the time. And you have to forgive me, I left my iPad in Cleveland, so I got to go old school with the paper. So I haven't done that part in a while, amen. But I, I realize that the future is now. Amen. Uh, that the time I dreamt about as a boy is under my feet right now. The time, the ground that I'm standing on is holy, not because of this plush carpet or whatever, but because it's the word of God. And we're going to read in a minute. Amen. Amen. Uh, but we just, we just thank God that it's happening right now. You may be seated. Just go ahead and see. Amen. Amen. How many are glad that yesterday is over with? Only, I only heard about two people. Amen. Yesterday is over with. Hallelujah. And um, I'm glad about the sermon of the sun. Yeah, th did you know that there was a sermon in the sun? Yeah, it says, great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every day. Hallelujah. That's why we can say that this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. This, since this is a fertile time, uh, since the environment is combustible and the soil is ripe for every seed that is planted to grow, it is of the utmost importance that we don't waste the time that we have. 
It would be tempting for us to fall into the rigorous repetition of just coming to the workers' meeting and having a good time. Uh, we go to church, you know, sing some songs, clap our hands, may cut a step or two, uh, hear a good word, and go home. Amen. I dare to say that there's something else out there, a greater purpose than that. The truth is we can't afford to waste time. The real foundational truth is that there is a hurting world out there that needs a healing word from us. People need the unabashed word of God preached from our mouths. The people that need a soothing warmth of a, a warm, loving hug. There's people that need a nourishing substance of nutrient of the food of which we can feed them. There are young brothers out there who uh, pick up knives and guns to articulate their anger. The sisters who don't realize how precious they are. Hallelujah. And they allow themselves, like the preacher said yesterday, to be sampled. Mm. To live in or, or the per, uh, live and, and try to get with people over the internet. There are those men and women who are following the, the leading of feelings. People who are following their hearts and find themselves in the snare of the LGBT community. And lifestyle. There are people in the church and in the world who struggle with pornography. There are millions of people who use alcohol, drugs, and other narcotics, hallelujah, to solve their certain sentimental uh, uh, situations. And uh, there's millions of people that, that are led away from the purpose of God by things that they should have dominion over. Hallelujah. 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 The truth is that we can skillfully play the instruments and hoot and holler when we preach, but we can become suited and booted and every strand of hair is in the right place and our, our handkerchief is right matching our socks and everything. But if we don't stop wasting time and get serious about being effective, the people will die. Without having known Jesus. And it will be our fault. Somebody say amen. We, we, we are present without being accountable. But there's good news today. We can repent and recourse ourselves back into God's own course. Since this room is filled with primarily us you know, uh, ministers and church leaders, Ohio North is in the house. It is apropos, it is appropriate for this time that the time is right now. Uh, we dare not waste time because we know that the people's lives are dependent on it. We dare not exchange a form for a function. Somebody say amen. There's too much at stake. Ohio North, we have to be careful that we don't miss the moment. Father God, we thank you for your word, Lord. Let it convict us and catapult us into the mission that you would want us to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Some time ago, a small East Coast community was struggling financially, so they called an open town meeting to discuss a problem. A couple of dozen people were there, including a stranger that nobody seemed to know. Hallelujah. Most assumed that this stranger was a tourist who had just dropped in on the meeting. He started to make a comment when various ideas were offered, but uh, he was interrupted, so he just kept quiet the rest of the meeting and ended up even leaving frustrated, leaving the meeting early. Just as the stranger left, a late arriving resident came in and asked with excitement, what is he doing here? Is he going to help us? The other said, who are you talking about? Who was that man? The latecomer replied, you mean you don't know who John D. Rockefeller is? 
Hallelujah. That's his yacht in our harbor. Didn't you get his help? Now, you know who John Rockefeller is, amen? One of the richest men in the history of the world. Someone cried out despair. No, we didn't get his help because we didn't know. We didn't recognize. You see, they missed the moment. Hallelujah. Yes, like the people in this anecdote, we blow opportunities. We waste time. And we miss the moment. Many times in our life, God inter, uh, gives us opportunities to help others. And God's magnificent plan interweaves with, in our lives and circumstances together with others. And after all, we are the church, right? We are supposed to to be effective ambassadors of the faith, to carry the gospel into a foreign land. We are the mailmen. Despite the conditions that may surround us, we are charged with delivering the message. Somebody say amen. We are that great beacon light of hope. We're responsible for being the guiding light to those who are in darkness. And the deception who are, and are depressed and we are responsible for giving them or presenting the package of everlasting life. We are called to be shepherd, the herdsmen, who are responsible for protecting and encouraging people and caring for people. And to rescue those who have wandered off and gotten themselves into trouble we have, and become ensnared in the traps of the enemy. We are the ones who need to intervene and to provide a shoulder to cry on, to be the resounding voice of holiness in a society that seeks to drown the voice out. God has put us in a place where we should and could be used for his glory, but often, just like the disciples in the Last Supper, we miss the moment. Hallelujah. We just don't get it. Turn to somebody and say, don't miss the moment. If we were to look closely at the passage of the Gospel of, of John in chapter 13, we would see a reflection of us in the biblical mirror. You see, some people think incorrectly that the Bible is supposed to be a microscope or a magnifying glass to see others. But in fact, the Bible is a, a mirror in which we can see ourselves so that we can change. Hallelujah. Uh, immediately, when you talk about the Last Supper, you think about one person's name beside Jesus. Think about a guy named Judas. You know, that scoundrel, Judas. That devil, Judas. That rascal, Judas. Our opinions have been shaped by a rather slanted perspective. It's the same opinion that we have of the world. Ew, look at that drug dealer. Ew, that prostitute. Ew, that broke down preacher. Ew, those people. We believe that Judas uh, actually personifies evil itself. When we look at people, we say, ew, because they, they personify evil himself. Hallelujah. I'm not suggesting that we would glorify Judas, but Judas was a victim too. He was a victim of a missed moment you see it's easy somebody say easy hold out the, the z easy uh -huh. it's easy to look at judas with disdain because after all he's the one that betrayed christ he's the one that played him and sold him out judas quite frankly has really just become the scapegoat for everything that went wrong hallelujah it would be easy to point the finger at Judas. But the truth is, Jesus knew Judas was going to betray him when he washed his feet. He knew that Judas was going to betray him when he called him. But he still loved Judas. He spent time with Judas knowing that he was going to betray him. So Jesus loved Judas. Hallelujah. We can read the utter hatred that even the writers of the New Testament had for Judas. It's interesting, all of the comments that you read speak negatively of Judas. Our attention focuses on the flaws of Judas, but ignores the utter failure 
of the other disciples of God to go out and rescue him. It's easy to point the finger at Judas. Hallelujah. Because it, it takes the blame and the focus off of us. It's easy to point the finger at Judas. It's easy to, to point the finger and make scathing remarks about gays and lesbians. It's easy. It's easy to, to look at the mass wedding on TV and, 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 and post all types of stuff on Facebook. It's easy to do that. It's easy to look at a thug and to, and, and to, 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 to dis, disrespect them. It's easy to look at Judas. It's easy to point the finger at Judas. But in spite of all of that, at the beginning of the 13th chapter of John, Jesus gave his disciples in the passage a chance to minister to this brother, to help this brother, to guide this brother. And what do they do? They miss it. Tell somebody, say, don't miss the moment. You would think, right? You would think, right? This group of Jesus' boys, the, the powerful preachers, hallelujah, that the people who walked and talked and fellowshiped with and ministered with Jesus Christ would realize an opportunity for ministry. If anybody could do it, it would be them. If anybody could help somebody out that need to be cleansed, it was them. If anybody needed somebody to, be, or to lead somebody to repentance, it was them. They could do it, but they missed it. And what happened? Judas hung himself. Somebody say amen. You see, we cannot afford to miss the moment because the world, the people will commit suicide if we don't say something to them. Don't miss the moment. Verse 21 says, now Jesus was in great anguish. Are you there? I'm reading from the Little Living Translation, just so it can be just a little bit clearer. The truth, uh, Jesus was in great anguish of spirit, and he exclaimed, the truth is, one of you will betray me. Everybody say, hint. Or, uh, you know, if you in my age, my contemporary say, message. Y'all remember that? Amen. One may think that Jesus was really worried about the cross. But perhaps Jesus was not so much troubled about the cross, but maybe he was troubled about what was about to occur. Maybe he was troubled and perhaps he was troubled because his boys, his homies, his road dogs just didn't get it. Jesus could have been troubled because Judas' life has started spinning out of control and Jesus could see where it was headed, but he was troubled because none of his boys were going to do anything about it. Verse 22, it said, and the disciples looked at each other wondering whom he could mean. Even after this, the disciples were still confused of what Jesus or who Jesus was talking about. And so there begins to, some questioning and it's right there in verse 23 says one of Jesus' disciples, the one who Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus at the table. Simon Peter motioned to him to ask who would do this terrible thing. Leaning toward Jesus he asked, Lord who is it? And Jesus said it's the one whom I give the bread dipped in the sauce. Y'all with me? And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. Jesus could not have made it plainer to see. He practically pointed Judas out himself to all of the rest. And it's almost like they didn't even see him do it. Jesus was trying to get the brothers to intervene, not necessarily in the plan of salvation, but to, to save Judas's life. 
Hallelujah. And 27, it says, and soon as Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus told him, hurry, do it now. And verse 28 should resound in our spirits because, again, we're looking at ourselves. Verse 28 says, and none of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. The disciples couldn't comprehend what that meant. They were in they were this in this mirror again. There we are in this mirror again. You see, it couldn't be more plainly for us. Maybe the reason that we find ourselves in and around uh, us in round situations is so that we can save others. This world needs us to be who we say that we are. Many times we have not prayed for people. Many times we have not said a word of encouragement to somebody. Many times we have not been moved to be a blessing to somebody else. Many times we have not been paying attention enough to give someone a hug when they were hurting because we assume that we don't need it. We keep on moving and we keep everything to ourselves. We miss the moment every day. These assumptions have deadly consequences. Ultimately, for Judas, in Matthew 27, is, is illustrated there. Verse 3 says, when Judas had betrayed him, he realized that Jesus had been condemned to die. He was filled with remorse. And so he took his 30 pieces of silver back to the leading priest and the other leaders. And he said, I have sinned, he declared. You see, Judas was seeking repentance. He was seeking forgiveness. For I have betrayed an innocent man. And what do we care? They retarded. That's your problem. Then Judas threw the money on the floor of the temple and went out and hung himself. He hung himself. He committed suicide. A man who, while it was, in, it, see, it was in the plan of salvation. To, to betray Jesus, yes. But I don't believe that Jesus, it was Jesus' desire for Judas to stay that way. I, I just don't think that it was Jesus' desire that Judas remain in the mindset that he was in. It was not Jesus' desire for Judas' life to be defined only and purely by this moment. It was not Jesus' desire for him to be remembered for that. It was, it was set up and he was setting it up so that he can be forgiven. But they missed the moment. Jesus desired because he gave hint after hint to be reconciled with Judas, don't miss the moment. Missing the moment could be fatal for somebody else. Uh, God is putting people, different people, somebody say different people, around us so that we can be effective, right? In fact, we are called to be the salt of the earth. Isn't that what Jesus said? You know, salt is effective. It, it changes things that it touches Somebody say amen. Uh, so that we can offer them hope. If we don't speak up, if we don't love somebody else, if we don't take the time to hug, if we don't take the time to show random acts of kindness, if we don't tell people that they can make it, if we don't encourage people, then the Judases that we encounter are going to commit suicide. One of Judas' boys, one of his disciples, could have, it, it, it could have encouraged Judas just to wait three more days. If somebody would have reminded Judas, maybe he wouldn't have took, taken his own life. If somebody would have told him that, yeah, you did that, but you are forgiven. It's going to be all right. Uh, uh, that although, hallelujah, he did something egregious, that God could have covered him. Hallelujah. If someone could have told Judas the story of repentance, if somebody could have reminded him that the love of Christ and the forgiveness of Christ 
that, that he saw by his own eyes was for him to how Jesus restored the sight to the blind if somebody could have reminded him how Jesus cured people of leprosy if somebody could have reminded him that Jesus healed a paralytic hallelujah if somebody could have reminded him that Jesus healed a woman with the issue of blood if somebody could have reminded him that he healed Jairus' daughter if one of them could have reminded Judas about the man with dropsy and the man with palsy and the deaf mute and the servant of the Roman centurion even though he was now possessed by a demon if somebody reminded him that sometimes Jesus called demons out hallelujah if somebody could have reminded Judas that Jesus raised Lazarus who was dead and sinking in the grave then maybe Judas wouldn't have killed himself. You see, our words, our love can help someone recognize that they can live. Our love can help somebody recognize that they can live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See, it's up to us to speak life into people. See, I believe that God is calling uh, us to wake up out of our stupor. Don't miss the moment. We encounter Judas's every day. We encounter Judas's. You know, some, in fact, there may even be some Judas's in this room who are thinking about tonight and contemplating, what am I going to do? And some of us maybe in this room may have been contemplating giving it all up no hallelujah no there are people who are struggling with a push to betray Jesus there's people who who have betrayed him already there are people who are walking on the way to the tree with the the noose already prepped there are people that are in and outside of this room who don't think that they can hang on. There are people who think that they have made decisions too deep to recover from. Whose past is growing up like weeds and choking themselves out. In fact, that's what Iscariot means. It means to choke. Somebody say amen. There's people whose past is chasing them like the boogeyman in the dark, whose mind is all twisted up, suggesting that they do something contrary to his word, who is contemplating giving it up, giving it up, whose self-worth is non-existent, who Satan is talking in their ear, suggesting something like this, you ain't worth. Hallelujah. We're used to shunning Judas's, dogging Judas's, talking about Judas's, spreading rumors about Judas's. But we need to let them know, remind them that you may have cheated on Jesus. You may have, have, have sold him out. But, somebody say, but. The stories have been proven. Hallelujah. That if, Je if God, if Jesus has done it before, if he has forgiven somebody before, he can forgive you. If he has restored somebody before, he can restore you. Somebody say amen. If we're not careful, we'll be like the people in Acts, right? The theme of missing the moment will continue if we're not careful. Because in, in Acts 16, 16, it says, and one day, listen to this, one day as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a demon-possessed slave girl. She was a fortune teller who earned a lot of money for her masters. She followed along behind us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. So even though she was demon possessed, even though she was in the midst of a struggle. She had complete understanding of who God was. 
And that's why she was there because she was seeking something. Something on the inside of her was pushing her to follow these men of God. And she knew she was in the right place. Excuse me. Hallelujah. And uh, she had a complete understanding of what God, who God was in salvation. And she followed Paul and Silas. That Notice it didn't say Paul and Silas followed her. It said that she followed Paul and Silas proclaiming the truth of why they were there. But yet... For days, she was ignored. Read the scriptures right there. And I'm closing. This went on, verse 18, day after day. Until Paul got so exasperated. Right, that's what it says right here. That he turned and spoke to the demon within her and said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, he said, and it instantly left her. But what, what about the days before? How many women, ladies like this, metaphorical ladies like this, who are possessed are following us around and we're ignoring them. Thank God she didn't turn and leave because it would have been on them. And in fact, I really think that's the reason why God caused them to be in prison, to teach them a lesson about missing the moment. We cannot waste time. We cannot waste, miss the moment. My fellow yoke men, Jesus says to us, you are the salt of the earth. Yes, yes, yes. And we are the agent for change. So therefore, come on, say, so therefore, go. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I believe God is calling us to the Judases of the world to be the salt. Ohio North. We can't miss the moment. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God praise for the word that we heard. Come on, let's bless the Lord for the word, the inspiration. And let's thank God for the vessel that he worked through, Pastor Curtin. God, thank you for your word. If you could just stand for just a moment where you are. We don't want to miss a moment. It is imperative that we make sure that we are moving forward with what God has called us to do. Amen. Bishop asked that if we do an altar call. I thank God for this word that I heard on this morning. I thank God for putting fresh fire under us for mission and for the things that we're called to do. We do not want to not be where God is calling us to be in this time. Pastor Curtin talked about the salt of the earth. That means we have to touch the problem for the salt to work. Salt has to touch the problem. If I put salt on my driveway to get rid of the ice, having a box of salt sitting on the side doesn't help me with the slippery situation. I've got to apply the salt to the situation and it begins to penetrate. It changes the nature of everything it touches. Salt changes the nature of everything it touches. And on today, we want to be the people that God is calling for. And when Pastor Curtin said he believed that that was why Paul and Silas ended up in jail, because they delayed.